Hi, my name is Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school computer science teacher. I'm going to show you how to use libgdx, which is a library for Java graphics. And you can download it using this big red button on badlogicgames.com. I've already downloaded it here, this setup file, and I also have an image file that I will share with you in the description down below. Now, on the computer I'm working on right now, I can't just double click on this, so instead I'm going to run the command line, cmd in Windows. I've stored this on my D drive, and I need to run the Java program. If I just type Java, it's not part of my uh, path for this computer. So I have to find that file. For me, it's on my C drive in Program Files, Android, Android Studio, JRE, which is the Java runtime environment. Choose bin and last, uh, there it is, java.exe. So that's the program. You'll do something similar on your computer if you can't just double click on the jar file. Then you put dash jar, that's a switch that says I want to run this jar file. And last, type in the name of the jar file to run. So this is a little program that will pop up on your screen. So we're going to fill in the details here. The game is going to be called Space Shooter. My package name is ca.grazley.spaceshooter. The name of the game class I'm going to call Space Shooter Game. The destination, now this is the folder on your computer that will store all of your files. Um, I'm using the D drive and I'll call my folder Space Shooter. This last bit right here, the Android SDK, mine's already filled in. If yours is not already filled in, you can go to Android Studio, choose Settings, either here or from the File menu if it's open, and then go to the Android SDK options here. So Appearance and Behavior, System Settings, Android SDK, and it will tell you the location. You can cut and paste that into this setup area. Under sub-projects, these are the different um, device types that you can create your game for. So desktop, Android, iOS, which I'm going to uncheck, and HTML, I'm also unchecking that. But I am going to keep desktop, even if I want to make an Android app, I will keep desktop on so that I can test it very quickly on my computer. These extensions are for our different um, tools that are built in for different kinds of games, for example, controllers. Box2D is very popular. It's used for physics, things like stuff that bounces or uh, gravity. I'm not going to need that for my game, so I will uncheck that. I'm ready to generate. I'll get this warning. Yes, use the more recent version. All finished. Close that. I don't need my command prompt anymore, so I will exit from that as well. And let's open that project on my D drive. So on the D drive, I have two uh, options here. One is a PNG file, and the other is Space Shooter with the Android Studio icon. That's the one I want. It's tempting to click this and choose one of these options in here with these same icons. Don't do that. Just choose the top level. Press OK. This can take a few minutes to build for the first time. Okay, so we have uh, three different folders over here in the project area. Let's talk about each of them. Android, Core, and Desktop. Android has all of the stuff that's required for the Android version of your app. Desktop has all the stuff that's required for the desktop version. And Core is everything that is common to both Android and Desktop and also iOS and HTML if you were doing those. So we are mostly going to work in the core area. Now, one thing about the Java, or sorry, the Android area is this assets folder. We will be putting our images and things in there. So right now there is an image that is par uh, part of the um, initial setup or template that they make for you. Let's go to the core, let's minimize this and this. Oops. Let's go to the core area, choose Space Shooter Game, double click it. And this is a pre-made, uh, well, game is a strong word, so it's it'll just display an image and a red background. You can see the red background right here. 
and the image is drawn here. We're going to go through how this works in just a moment. Now, if I press play right now, I'm already set up for Android, and so this will play as an Android app. Uh, but for testing purposes, I will often want to use a desktop version. So I'm going to go to Edit Configurations, add a new configuration here that is an application. I'll call it Desktop. The main class is the Desktop Launcher. That's in the Desktop area over there. Uh, the only other thing we need, oh yeah, down here, use class path of module desktop and press OK. And it's ready for us to play now. Let's give it a try. All right, there's the game, red background with the image displayed in the bottom left hand corner. So that's it so far. You can see it loads very quickly compared to using uh, an Android emulator. All right, so we are going to get rid of all of this stuff though and start our own um, game from scratch. So just delete everything that's here. And we're going to make another change as well. Instead of extending application adapter, we are going to extend game, which is from the Bad Logic um, library. You'll notice everything is underlined because that class has to be declared abstract or it has to implement the abstract method create in application listener. Okay, let's start that. Right click, choose generate, um, override methods, and let's start with that create method. This space shooter game class will basically just get things started and all of the work of the application is going to be done in another class. Let's make that right now. Right click on the package name, choose new, Java class, and this class is going to be called game screen. It will uh, have an interface that it implements. And that's going to be screen. There are more, there's more than one screen. Make sure you choose the bad logic screen right there. And visibility, well, it can be package private is fine. You press OK. Here it is. Once again, we need to implement some stuff. So we can right click, choose generate, implement methods. And we're going to need all of these, so we just press OK. So they're all there. We're going to come back and work on those in a moment. So now that our game screen is created, uh, is you know we have a, a class for it, now we can start to use it. So in our space shooter game, let's create a game screen object called game screen. In the create method, this is where we construct it. New game screen. It takes no parameters. And now this is the key part, set screen to game screen. So when the app begins, it will make the game screen and it will sort of display it uh, for the user. Um, a few more things that we're going to need in order for things to run properly here. We're going to generate a few more uh, overrides. Uh, we need the render method, so that will draw stuff on the screen. We need the resize method in case the user resizes their desktop application. Doesn't really happen for Android, but it does happen on the desktop. And dispose, we will need that as well. That will clean stuff up when we're finished. Um, and here we'll have game screen dot dispose. Um, super dot render is fine. Super dot resize. Actually, we need to do game screen dot resize there. Okay, so a couple of changes. I'm not even sure that we really need this one actually. Let's get rid of that. So game screen dot dispose, super dot render, and game screen dot resize. All just kind of automatic here. That's it for the game class. That is enough to set things in motion. The rest of our work is going to happen in the game screen class. So let's go there now. I'm going to move a couple of things around. I'm going to take this show method and move it down near the bottom. We're not going to need it right now. We're going to work inside of the render method in a moment. Before that, let's set up some field variables, some uh, information that we need to store for a long period of time. So we're going to have some screen stuff, we're going to have some graphics stuff, and we're also going to have some timing stuff for making things move on the screen uh, at the speed that we want. So for the screen, it has two parts to keep track of. We need a camera. 
and we need a viewport. In the graphics area, we need a sprite batch, which is essentially a, um, a list of all of the sprites to draw that you, you fill up the batch in order. It's like a, a sequence or a list of instructions. And we're going to need a texture, which is a, a, like a graphic or an image uh, for our background. Okay, one more thing. Uh, we're going to keep track of a private int called uh, background offset, and that will change over time. That's why it's in the timing section. Essentially, we want the, the background to move. Okay, we actually have one more thing. We want to have a list of parameters for our world. So let's make a private uh, final int world uh, width. And I'm just going to set that to 72 for now. Final int world height, which is going to be 128. So, oops, I'm sorry, I spelled height wrong. The there we go. These are constants that are not going to change throughout the app. So these, I'm thinking of these as um, values that maybe are in meters, and they will help us to display things um, consistently on the screen. Now, this is sort of a portrait mode rather than a landscape mode game, and that's why the width is so much smaller than the height. Now, if the screen size is slightly different, the world itself will just sort of stretch um, in one direction or the other to fit the world, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, okay, before we continue with anything else down here, we're going to need that background image, which has to go in this assets folder. So right now, I just have it sitting here. I'm going to cut that and move it into my Space Shooter Android Assets folder, and I'll just plop it there for now. Later we're going to learn some better ways to handle multiple images rather than just having files like this. So it shows up over here now as a PNG file. Okay, uh, well let's get started building the game screen constructor now. Game screen takes no parameters, and basically we just have to initialize a lot of this stuff. Let's start by initializing the camera. You can't say new camera because that class is not ready. It's, it's an abstract class, but we have to pick one of the subclasses. And we are going to use an orthographic camera, which is like the 2D camera you're probably used to. It has no 3D perspective. Basically, one thing is directly on top of the other, and you can't see what's behind it. And um, anyway, that's all there is to it. It's, it's the simplest kind of camera that we can use. The viewport is sort of like what we see or the screen the user sees. It's going to be also a particular kind of viewport called a stretch viewport. We have to give it three parameters, the world width, the world height, and also the camera that it is using to, uh, to know what to display to the user. Anyway, those two things set up the, uh, all of the image stuff that you need for the whole uh, game now. If we were to run this, actually, let's try it now. we have a screen. There's not much happening, but it is a screen. Let's continue. The background image, we're going to set up the image itself by making a new texture, and we just have to give it the name of the texture. Dark purple starscape.png. I can't remember if I showed you what that file looks like, so I'll maybe just double. Actually, I can show you right here. Double clicking it here brings it up in Android Studio. It's a small PNG file. It's not very big. Uh, I might come up with something better to post as well. So that's the background image. Um, the background offset timer, we will start that at zero. And one more graphics thing we need is we have to create the batch, the sprite batch itself. Oops, sprite batch and it takes no parameters either. So that will sort of collect all of the individual changes to the graphics that we create, and then we display them all at once. What do we have to do to display things on the screen? Well, a couple of things. We have batch.begin will start the sprite batch, and batch.end will finish it and display stuff. And in between, we need to do some things.
the resize method is for when you change the size of the window, but it also runs when the at the very beginning of the application running. So it kind of starts up with this resize method. Uh, and again, every time the user changes the screen size, that doesn't matter very much for Android because the screen size doesn't change. But as I said, it does start when it does run this method when the application starts. So we have two things to do. First, we have to tell the viewport to update according to the width and the height. And we have one more parameter to give it, which is whether this camera is centered or not. Um, this is a choice you can make. I'm going to say yes, we center the camera. And then the other thing we have to do is tell the batch to use a projection matrix. Now this is a little bit complicated, but basically throw in camera.combined and everything will look right on the screen. Okay, so that was pretty important. Let's go back up to the render method and continue from here. Inside of the, uh, after we begin the batch, we can start adding individual instructions. So for example, we can do batch.draw and I'm going to start just by drawing the background. Let's put it at 0, 0, which is the bottom left-hand corner. And then you can see here we're going to use this float width and float height. Uh, the width we're going to use is the world width, and the height is the world height. Now our image is not rectangular, it's square. Uh, so this is going to get stretched to fill the screen. Let's just play it and try it out. Okay, there it is, although generally our image, our screen should look something more like that. So it's stretched to fill the screen. We're going to improve on this a little bit. I'm going to show you how to make a scrolling background right now. So this is why we have this um, background offset value here. It starts at zero, and each time the render method is called, we are going to increase that value by one. If it gets really big, that is more than the height of the screen, then we are going to set it back to zero. So let's do that. If the background offset mod world height is zero, that is if it gets to be exactly 128 for in our case, uh, then we set it back to zero. So it goes zero, one, two, three, up to 127. If it becomes 128, we set it back to zero again. Okay, then we're going to do two draw commands. The first one is just like what we have here, except we're going to change the Y value. We're going to drop it down by the background offset. So subtract the background offset. That lowers the background on the screen. Let's just press play here so you can see what happens when we do that. You can see it gets dragged off of the screen and then it kind of starts over again. Well, let's do better than that. Let's also put, actually, I just copy and paste. We're going to use exactly the same line of code, but we are going to put another copy of the background up by the world height. So one that's shoved down and one that's shoved down, but then shoved way up by a copy of the world height. This will put two of them edge to edge, top to bottom. Let's press play now. Let me just drag it off to the side here so you can see. You can't tell where the, the seam is between because this background is designed to not have any lines in it. So you can't see where the, uh, where the change is happening. But if you watch one of the stars, you can see it starts up again, up at the top. Okay. Now we went down with the offset because if we had gone up, the stars would be going the other way and I wanted them to be flowing down the screen. Okay, that is a lot. We have, uh, have we finished everything now? Let me just see. Yep, pretty good. We've got everything we need to have a, a background. Oh, one more thing I didn't mention here. This uh, float parameter for the render method, I'm gonna change that to delta time. That is how much time has passed since the previous render cycle. So we are kind of ignoring that and just scrolling the background as quickly as we want to here. Instead, we could use the time to decide how far to scroll it, but this is very simple, so it's nice to just do it like this. Okay, so that's it for this time. If you have any questions, you can ask me, of course, uh, down in the comments, or if you're one of my students, you have other ways to get a hold of me. And uh, next time, we're going to learn how to draw individual objects on the screen that are not the background. Okay, thanks a lot.